Hi all. I know I've not been on for a while. Uh, I have a few reasons in regards to this, but I just wanted to come on today and talk about uh, basically what's been happening over the last few months. Now, for those who know me, you'll know that I've not had the best of few months. I've been rather up and down, medication's been all over the place. I've not been taking the medication at all, I've not been taking it at all. My emotions have been getting the better of me. I've been feeling worthless, the usual depression, anxiety, whatever it is. So anyway, so the reason why I stopped posting, stopped putting my videos on, is mainly because my videos were being used against me. Now, long story short, I've got a 12 year old daughter. A 12 year old daughter's mother is saying that my videos are proof that I am mentally unstable to take care of my 12 year old daughter. It's taken me this long to do another video because I didn't want anything else being used against me. However, luckily, it's been advised that despite this claim, uh, my videos are actually helping rather than hindering, so hence why I'm back. Like I said, my medication has been up and down as well, doesn't help matters. Uh, my same again, same reason, because of the things that have been saying to me, people are saying things to me. I've been taking them to heart. I've had my partner telling me that sometimes she feels like I'm not the same normal same person I was. So I started questioning as to whether my tablets were making me a completely different person and getting scared about that. Like I said, about people telling me they're going to use it against me. And yeah, it's just been an eventful time. So anyway, so what's been going on? Well, past few couple of months, I did a health and social care level two course. Obviously, finished that one and level three working with people with dementia or introduction to working with people with dementia. And that's opened my eyes a lot. Can help me out to. Uh, obviously, my main goal is to what I want to be when I finally get myself fit and well. Which obviously I want to help people who are in success like myself to understand that it's not normal, it's not acceptable, it's not right, and it shouldn't be like this. I shouldn't feel the way I feel. I shouldn't be treated the way I'm treated. And I shouldn't have to accept what, what, what I've accepted so far in my life. And like I said, it's just about working towards helping other people to understand this as well and understand what stigmas and problems to overcome. So yeah, so that's helped me out a lot. Uh, it was a big strain on me, I won't lie. Clear advice that I'm not ready for work yet because at two days a week training, they were in college and it drained me. I let my volunteering slip, I let my health and well-being slip, I was not me. So that's over anyway so hopefully I can work better with that now and get myself back on track. Also I've been feeling a lot of abandonment recently. Now I'm sure many people with mental health problems will be able to relate to this. I've not had any contact from anyone really. Uh, everyone's dropped me, as I said first previously, in regards to mental health help. I've been dropped. Don't, I don't get any help or advice in regards to how I'm feeling and what I'm feeling. All you get is his contact number, contact this number if you're feeling bad. Now, anyone who knows mental health will know that. You ain't gonna ring anybody if you're feeling bad. You're gonna hide away. You ain't gonna go kick it off for closing drivers. You're gonna keep yourself hidden away from it all. So I said, we all know that aspect that happens. Uh, because of the ongoing police case, I'm unable to get any help or advice in regards to my PTSD side. I'm unable to get any help in regards to my depression and anxiety problems. I'm unable to get advice in regards to anything really. Other than you can come in, you can have a chat, but that's it. If you mingle first. So obviously I'm doing it all myself. 
I also feel I've been let down by my previous employers, well, said previous, my current employers. I've been paid by their insurance now for the past six months. Since they started paying me under their insurance instead of paying me under a salary, they've not made a single attempt to contact me. Now that's six months of not seeing contact to see how I am, what I'm doing, where I'm up to, what my plan is, etc. They don't know how I'm feeling, they don't know how my health is. They know nothing about me because they don't contact me. And what I've been finding out as well is the people that work with me are all leaving one at a time. So the new people that are in there have no idea who I am, what I am. They just see me as a statistic on the wall and they make no, don't have to contact me because they're too afraid of the outcome. I know that, they're too afraid of what I will say or what I will do. I mean, come on, who's going to bring up someone who has a track history of mine in regards to mental health? When you, when you don't know the person at all. So I understand that, but I've had no contact with them. And I do feel let down by them, badly. I'm uh, still on the same medication. And that's not changed at all, like I said, apart from me not taking it or not being able to get to the doctors because I'm on really bad days and struggling to communicate with others. Uh, yeah, so I've gone days where I've not been able to get my prescription. I, I don't know how I can change that or what to do with that, so I'm working on that. Uh, what else? Yeah, I've got a daughter who started high school. I've got another daughter whose mother has stopped me seeing her because... Well, she's a bitch, but that's just my personal opinion. So we'll leave it at that one. I'm currently working on that one as well. I just... Yeah, I just feel really shit and bad at the moment, I feel down, I feel unwanted, I feel like my mental health has hit a whole new level of, oh it's uh, it's no new thing now, same old, same old, we don't really bother about it anymore. That's how I feel, and that's my honest opinion. I feel like I've just been dumped on the shelf as the crazy man from down the road or the crazy man with the crazy ideas. So yeah, so it's a hard thing to understand the cope with. Yeah, it's been a year since I've been out of, no, since I've been working. It's been a year since I had my major breakdown. And it's been almost a year since I was at the police station and reported the case. The only difference is now, I feel back to where I was before I did it. I don't know, I just, I don't feel myself. I don't feel like anyone is there to help me and I've got to find my own help. Because if I don't find my own help, then no one else is going to help. And it's just draining. The good thing I'm doing, like I said, I've done that course with uh, Health and Social Care. I've done the dementia. I'm doing the mental health recovery workshops, working myself through them, and I'm doing CV, solving CVS courses, all to keep myself busy, mainly, but also to understand where I am, why I am this way, and what my head is at. Because it's not easy to understand where my head's at. I know this. I feel so for anyone who has to figure me out. Because I can't do it. But yeah. Uh, Got what I'm saying now. Yeah, so like I said, I've been doing these, help, working on what they are, what mental health is, etc. How I can help myself and help others to, to feel the way I feel. So I hope that makes sense. So yeah. So anyway, so I thought, like I said, I'd give you a bit of an update. Now, there's another thing that's kind of glad for me at the moment in regards to this. I've pushed myself to limits this week and last week to test my anxiety, to test my depression, to test my thresholds and boundaries. 
I push myself to attend. Yeah, I push myself to attend uh, a firework display at the lights switch on in Manchester City Centre. I push myself to attend, attend a firework display in Beulah Park in Salford. All of which I was surrounded by crowds. My heart was rating ten to the dozen. Rating ten to the dozen. I think my heart rate got to one twenty four at one stage. Uh, that's testing through my smartwatch. So it's been killer. Cause I've been like I've been doing that. But there's no clear guidance as to what works and what doesn't. But it's I just feel like uh, we're in a world where people are still afraid of the mental health in men. People are still afraid of what male mental health is, or people are still afraid of what goes on in a man's mind. If that makes sense. Because we're all supposed to be stubborn, we're all supposed to be, uh, have a stiff upper lip and accept the world as it is today and not take it to heart. The usual bull. We're all supposed to understand what goes on as being nothing or as acceptable. It's not easy. I know I'm just waffling now, aren't I? But it scares me. It seriously does. Let's face it, if I was to stand in a room now in front of 50 people who have never met me before in my life, all supposed to be living their normal life, and I said, I have mental health problems. What do you reckon the first thing that would happen? The room would go quiet, there'd all be a hush, there'd be doubt, there'd be fear. How many of them would relate to me? How many of them would understand? Or how many of them would just alienate me? It's clear. We all know the answer to that. It'd just be mainly alienation. Unless you experience it, you struggle with it, and it's not good. So, yeah, so it's not the best, is it? I, like I said, I've been uh, doing courses with the Mental Health myself, and I've been around people that know mental health, that understand the mental health, and that work in mental health. If you speak to someone that works in mental health, there'll be two, three reasons why. One, there's no other jobs going, and so they end up doing that. Two, the money's good, it isn't, but they might believe it is. And three, they've experienced or have found that they've experienced mental health problems themselves. That is a free category you can find in a self healthcare professional. A mental health care professional, actually. Me, I'll be the latter. I said, my, my desire in the future time in the future but in the future nonetheless is to become an early intervention worker with mental health with mental health in males you know the hardest characters you can go for because how many males have admit mental health anyway so let's change the so I think I can ask one question recently which I struggled to answer despite knowing the answer. I got asked why now? Why have I come forward about what I went through as a child now? Why not 10 years ago? Why not in 10 years time? And we, I know the answer. I hit lock, lock bottom. I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't hold anything else in. Uh, people around me just crumbling and falling away. I've witnessed people walk away from me time after time, day after day. I feel secluded and alone on my own. And I felt like I had nobody who understood me. So I needed to get that part out of my life. I did it and I thought, yeah, great. This is out now, I can talk about it. I can get the help I need. No. But my fears came true. Ten years ago, I thought about doing it. It was a completely different kettle of fish ten years ago, male mental health than it is now. There's a lot less understanding or acknowledgement of mental health. In males 10 years ago, same as it was 20 years ago, and 30 years ago, and same as it was last year. 
new things come out every day. These new news clips come out about uh, so, uh, football coaches done this or celebrities done this or the usual uh, Houses of Parliament's the latest one that they're all going on about. They're highlighting it all. What, what are they doing? They might be highlighting it. They're getting people to come out and be open and honest. They're nearly the by blocking them out and not giving them the help that they need to cope with it. That fear of jeopardising a court case. I've been at many points where I've been thinking, I'm going to stop this case purely so I can get some help, purely so I can get closure in my own head. But then I realise it's not fair. It's not fair to others. That's what I experienced. I shouldn't leave that up to others. No. Don't get me wrong, the case isn't going as I want it to. The main culprit died. He got away, he's lucky, he managed to escape. The main person that hurt me in my those during my childhood and is probably the benefactor of seventy five percent of my adult decisions died and got away with it. He died of cancer. I can only hope it was uh, excruciating for him. I can only hope that he got the punishment that everyone else should have got. But not a punishment. I was a bit wrong. I only hope that he got the punishment that he deserved. But he didn't get the exact punishment. He didn't get to face me. And that upsets me. I didn't get to face him. I didn't get to tell him what he's done to my life. I didn't get to point out how he's destroyed my life. So. It's not easy. It's not easy whatsoever. I can tell you that much. So I said I thought about because he's died. I've thought about many times of pulling out of everything else, letting the others just get away with it. But I just something just burns me on to keep going. And yeah, we'll get there. See how it goes. But either way, I still have to live with the issues and problems that I've got on me. I still have to live with the troubles that come with day to day lifestyle. Mm, yeah, so that's the joys of uh, mental health, really, I suppose. I have another question, actually, funny enough, that did tickle me. I'm sat there one day, laughing and joking, and one of my so called friends turned around to me and went, There's nothing wrong with you. You're faking it. I'm faking what? You're faking mental health illness. How the hell can you fake mental health illness? He asked him. He goes, Well, you're always cheerful, chatty, you're always going out places, doing different things, you're always laughing and joking. So I turned around said, Yeah, but have you ever seen me at home on my own? Have you ever seen me when I'm going closed doors? Have you ever seen me when I hide myself away from everyone else? Have you ever seen me sat in a corner crying my eyes out uh, in a fetal position? Have you ever seen me when everyone else is asleep, just sat on the edge of the bed crying or on the floor or in the bathroom? Have you ever seen my nightmares where I'm lashing out and hitting at everything, screaming and waking up, crying and drenched in sweat? Have you ever seen me have my uh, flashbacks where I'm sat there concentrating on a TV program and then all of a sudden I just get a flashback and I start shaking and going inside myself and just hiding away and he's like no I said well then because that's going to cover him up very well as I've done for the last 20 odd years because I've learned to cover him up because if I didn't learn to cover him up I'd be in a really bad place right now instead I'm having to cope with myself and carry on using my cover up techniques in order to get on with life to get on with responsibilities to do what I need to do he went quiet then. Don't know whether it was because he wasn't expecting this say any of that, or whether he got scared because of what I was telling him. But either way, he went quiet then. And he apologised, which is good. But it's these things that... I feared. I feared, many years ago, if I had come out and talked about what happened to me as a child, I would end up in social seclusion. No one would want me about. I'd been damaged goods. I'd be uh, unwanted in circles, I wouldn't be able to do this, do that. People wouldn't accept me for who I am. And then they'd be left on a shelf 
lack of living back. I don't know, no option but save your own life. And if I'm honest, that's how I've ended up anyway. That's how I feel I've ended up. That's how I feel right at this moment in time. And that's how I've felt for a long time. Purely because I've been left abandoned. And there's got to be a new new format for it or a new way of doing it with people, uh, doing mental health. There's got to be a new format for helping people who have these issues. I mean, I went to where all my problems happened. Well, not all of them, but I, went, I did a drive round with an officer the other day on an estate where I spent a lot of my childhood where I had a lot of problems. And I was having to point out houses that looked familiar to me having discussions about them and it wasn't easy it surely wasn't I'm there doing that and then I come out at the end of it and as much as I had the intentions of doing this that and the other going to this place going that place and all I wanted to do is just go and curl up in a ball and hide myself in the world I didn't want to be out I didn't want to be alone but that's how it was so yeah so I said stop all that big catch up I'm going to do a few more videos, I'm not going to give up on these videos, I'm not going to give up on the posting formats, I'm going to make sure that I am vocal and talk again. So thank you very much for people who watch and listen. I know I do ramble on a lot, I know I do talk a lot of uh, gobbledygook at times, but it's, this is my way of venting, we all know this, this is my way of talking about my problems and issues, and then I'm going to be more open and honest about things that happen and how it happened and what happened so anyway thank you very much for listening and watching thank you very much if you do help and share because i may just be waffling and chatting rubbish but my rubbish that i'm chatting might just help someone else to understand why i am the way i am or other people are the way they are so feel free to share my posts to accept what it is and feel free to ask any questions you want to thank you very much